secondary growth in plants. Secondary growth is due to the activities of the cambium or lateral meristems. Secondary growth brings about increase in the thickness of the shoot and the roots. Hence, secondary growth is also known as secondary thickening. Secondary growth occurs mainly in dicotyledonous plants that have cambium tissues. Now, there are two types of cambium tissues based on their location. There is the vascular cambium located within the vascular tissue between the primary xylem and the primary phloem. And then the cork cambium located beneath the epidermis. The secondary growth begins with the lateral division of the vascular cambium to form a continuous cambium ring. So, after formation, in most plants, the secondary growth begins two years after formation. And the first change that takes place is the formation of the cambium ring, whereby the vascular cambium divides laterally like that to form a continuous cambium ring. Now, the cambium within the vascular tissue is known as the intrafascicular cambium. While the cambium that is in between the vascular tissues is known as interfascicular cambium. During secondary growth, the intrafascicular cambium divides to give rise to secondary xylem on the inside. Here, this is a, here we have the cambium ring, and within the vascular cambium, you have the intrafascicular cambium. So, this intrafascicular cambium divides mitotically to give rise to the secondary xylem on the inside and secondary phloem on the outside. See, this secondary phloem is produced on the outside of the intrafascicular cambium, while the secondary xylem is produced on the inside of the intrafascicular cambium. The intravascular cambium, this is the intrafascular cambium, also divides to give rise to secondary parenchyma which appears as medullary ray. So this interfascicular cambium also divides to give rise to the secondary parenchyma which appear as medullary rays. The medullary rays, that is the parenchyma cells in the medullary rays, allow for lateral movement of water, mineral salts and nutrients across the stem. So through this, through this, uh, the parenchyma cells that make up the medullary ray, substances can move laterally. That is, if you look at this plant, materials can move laterally like that, along the parenchyma the secondary parenchyma produced by the interfascicular cambium. So, you have the formation of the secondary xylem and the secondary phloem from the vascular cambium, which first divides to form a continuous cambium ring. The cambium within the vascular cambium is known as the intrafascicular and gives rise to the secondary xylem and secondary phloem, and the interfascicular gives rise to the secondary parenchyma cells that appear as medullary rings. Now, in order to accommodate the new secondary xylem, secondary phloem, and the parenchyma tissues, the cork cambium 
This is a cork cambium. Also undergoes mitotic division. On the inner side, it gives rise to the secondary cortex. Here, here you have the secondary cortex on the inner side. While on the outer side, it gives rise to cock cells. Mature cock cells are impregnated with a fatty substance known as suberin. The suberin makes the cells impervious to air and water. And the cock cells may also be filled with waste products such as tannins and resins. Hence, they die. The cock cells die because of their being impregnated with the impervious suberin and waste products. The cock cells increase in number and become the back. They form the back of the stem. Functions of the back of the stem include one, prevents the entry of microorganisms and pathogens. Two, prevents excessive loss of moisture. And three, protects the stem from physical and mechanical injury. So at maturity, here we can look at how a mature stem looks like after secondary growth. There are rings that are visible at the center. You have the medullary rays. Then there are two types of wood. That is the fibrous part. You have the heartwood and the sapwood. Now, the heartwood is the part of the non-conducting xylem because as the tree ages, the xylem near the pith, that is the pith, the xylem at the center becomes heavily lignified. And other substances such as tannins and oils are deposited such that these islands become blocked and as such they cease to serve as conducting vessels. So they become non-conducting and they form the heartwood. So the heartwood consists of non-conducting xylem. The younger secondary xylem closer to the vascular cambium. Is still conducting water and minerals and it's known as the sapwood. So the sapwood consists of the conducting xylem while the heartwood is made up of the non-conducting xylem. Then towards the periphery you have the phloem both the primary and the secondary phloem and the back the phloem makes a part of the back then after the phloem, you have the secondary cortex. You also have the cork cambium in this layer and the outer part, the cork cells. Now, at some points on the back, the cork cells may not be suberized, but form a loose mass called lenticels. So within a lenticel, we have a loose mass of cork cells. The lenticels allows gases exchange to take place freely between the inside and the outside. So gases like oxygen diffuse into the stem while carbon four oxide diffuse out. Now in many plants, that have secondary growth. The new tissues are usually formed or produced during the growing season. Such so that as the secondary tissues are laid, there's a series of rings that become clearly visible. 
So when you look at a cross section of a stem that has undergone secondary growth, you see rings. These are known as the annual rings because each ring represents a growth season. And in temperate current countries, for example, there's only one growth, growing season in one calendar year. So during the dry season, the cambium is dormant. Hence, there's no growth. In temperate countries where there's only one growing season in one calendar year, only one ring forms in a year. Hence, the term annual rings. So only one ring forms in a year, hence the rings are also known as the annual rings. So the age of the plant can be worked out by counting the annual rings. So starting from here, the oldest are on the center, so if you can count the rings going outward like this, because these are the oldest, the oldest, the oldest are inside and then you have the youngest. The vascular cambium is found along this region where the xylems are produced on the inside and the secondary phloem on the outside. So the oldest xylem are at the center making up the heartwood and the youngest that are still conducting are towards the periphery and make up the sapwood.